Welcome back in here to a Tuesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show. Joined here in the UDL by the man, the myth, the legend. He's got notes. Everybody get yeah, your mug. Welcome to Roja. I'll never forget. I, I picked up my date in 2000 to go to an LSU game, and she had a sign when she walked out of the deal that said, everybody get your motherfucking Rohan. <laughs> and I said, I am I in love, love with this girl, man. <laughs> and the whole time when Rohan hit <laughs> Josh Lee, we in the stands, everybody get your mother. Uh, Ooh, Rohan Davies, is that great? Is that Good great? For her. Where's is, she? Is that a great? I don't know, but it was, it, was, it was an all-timer. And that was back in the day where they didn't even look at the signs. You could walk in, you could walk in the stadium. I mean, we don't, we don't need ESPN, baby. <laughs> I mean, like. Throwing golf balls, uh, of course. Yeah. Yes, indeed. That's dope. Uh, Rohan, yeah, good to see you. What's happening? It's football season, baby. Man, thank God. Yes, it did. Uh, it feels like it. Feels like it. Before we get into LSU, before we get into SEC, we were talking about uh, high school football. We're looking forward to Woodlawn and Madison prep this week, Ooh. which uh, you'll you'll see some of the uh, the best prospects in the state uh, on both sides of the ball. You and I have talked about Ricky Collins uh, a couple of times, but these are the these are the matchups and the games that Ricky Collins lives for, right? I mean, these are yeah. the ones that you can't yeah, yeah. keep him off the field. Yeah, yeah, he's a high, high, high competitor. Um, definitely loves the challenge, and he's going to have one. Because is Q playing? Yes. Q he sat did. right here on Monday morning, bro. And, I mean, <laughs> last Friday morning. I and, almost took the couch with him. I mean, this cat, dude. He's special. He's got to be the number one defensive end in the country. He's special, man. And, 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 and he's in the mold of, you know, all those guys. Uh, you got the big kid out of Donisonville. Yep, uh, jo- uh, so, Tap, and, and Jamon Tap. I was so I was working out one morning and actually had the privilege of seeing him work out over at LSU, and <laughs> impressive. Yeah, can we just say that he didn't even have to take a step. That boy walked in and took his shirt off mm. and got to warming up, and different. Yeah, you know what I mean. Different. If 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 LSU. Could land both of those kids to go with what they have on the D line with everybody coming back. Then the development, excuse me, the development of Jaqueline, yeah. uh, the big kid out of Ponchatoula, Mason. Uh, yep, Mason Smith. Uh, eight. Uh, BJ Ojalary. BJ, I'm gonna just say that. Um, and then you bring these guys in, man. That's how you start that 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 thing with units. Mm-hmm. This COVID gave. Not just LSU, but he gave all these teams an opportunity to not really reload with them giving this extra year and everybody coming back, but he gave them a chance to add depth and not to have the young guys just thrown in the mix and playing right away. That's what's going to help LSU. I expect big things from LSU's defensive line this year. Um, what other recruits are you looking forward to seeing this season? Guys that you saw on the summer circuit that you may say, he's not getting the intention and love that he deserves right now, but just wait. And come Friday nights, and he will get that. I think that Ricky Collins probably fits that bill, but he made more of a name for himself this summer than he than than uh, last summer, probably because of people actually having a chance to get out and see him. Correct. Um, and him going to camps and, and being able to work out. Correct. I think that a lot of those kids lost lost a lot of the exposure during this time over like the last year, year and a half. Um, there's a wide receiver as Zachary Cam. Uh huh. Slot receiver, very explosive, very competitive. Um, he's a guy that I think is going to garnish probably not major Power Five offers because he's a smaller guy, but definitely scholarship offers. Uh, he's one of those. I always see this magazine that say diamonds in the rough, and to me, he's one of those guys that's a diamond in the rough. Cam Brown, yeah, uh-huh. oh, Cam, yeah, senior wide receiver, played on our team, so he's good. Ricky, you bring up Ricky, man. I really I think love that Ricky this <laughs> year for Ricky is going to be one of those years where because of the talent that he's going to face, a lot of – I've spoken to these guys that call about our guys, call about these guys, and the question is the question is going to be consistency from him. So, honestly – Rick has the opportunity this year, and not just him, his coaching staff and all the other players around him. And Moran has the opportunity to show what kind of coach he is because yeah. Woodlawn loaded. Yeah. And they so are. is Catholic. So is Scotlandville. So is Warren Eastern. So right. is these teams that they're going to play. Yeah. 
So you know what they always say: the mantra is a coach will a coach will win you or lose you two or three games a year, right? Regardless of the talent, because with the decision making, so on and so forth. So Ricky and that coaching staff have the opportunity to really cement themselves this year. Ricky has a chance, in my opinion, to just take leaps and bounds yeah. and catapult himself to the top of his class, period. Yeah. With him, if he runs through this schedule that they have this year and he plays well yeah. and they win the state championship where, you know, he yeah, just, just played. Play he's he's yeah. going to show – he can show these people, he can show these guys, he can show these naysayers exactly what he's about with this football season. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think you're Me right, too. man. I mean, everybody is, is talking about that kind of uh, – underground when you talk about high school football one of the programs that first rolls off the tongue with people around here in this area is Woodlawn and it's because they got they got players yeah. first and foremost but Marcus Randall and their schedule is yeah. is got to be it's the brutal. toughest in the state it's got to be it, it is the num it is the hardest schedule in the state of Louisiana it's got to be do you I mean, think that's who LSU ends up circling for the 2023 class? Because Arch is obviously out there, but do you think it, it becomes LSU and Ricky Collins as a marriage? I think that right now, I don't think that the community is steadfast that that's a concrete offer. Uh -huh. I think that the community uh -huh. thinks that that offer, you have the, he's, the, he's the biggest and the baddest thing in Baton Rouge. He's the best quarterback in Baton Rouge. You could compare him to Ark. You could compare him to all these other guys. But when it comes to his athletic ability, his competitiveness, and I know these guys have to be competitive to be ranked as high as they are, so it's not a shot at Ark or any of these other quarterbacks. I know Ricky personally. So for him, it's going to be consistency from week one to week ten. And he has to stay focused. And them coaches, M. Moran and those guys, they have to do – because you can have a loaded team. You can have all this talent, all this – but if you don't do what you're supposed to, then it's a bust. Yeah. You know, that's the way – so for them, it's whether playoff, championship, whatever it is, or bust. And they have to recognize and know what they have. Don't do what you told me Bevel was doing last night oh. with, 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 with my guy Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Woodlawn's got a five-star cornerback too, don't they? Yep. Is, is it Banks? Nope. That's Roshan Matthews. Matthews. Yeah. Matthews. Matthews. Yeah, they look. And, and listen, he's uh, he's what you want in these six one corner long, you know, six seven wingspan, um, young guy. He's a young cornerback, mm -hmm. super super talented. What we want to see out of him, and what we've been pushing is he has great ball skills, he has great feet, everything. We just need to see him now turn that into interceptions going the other way. Uh -huh. Now turn it into – now instead of you being a, a, a great corner, great um, potential, now it's let's be a great corner that's a playmaker. Uh -huh. That makes a difference, not just batting the ball down. Because ain't nobody going to beat the kid. He got great feet, all that. Intelligent, smart as our, all outdoors – all we want to see now from him is not go up and make that pick when yeah. you you Change the scoreboard. Maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be a difference maker. Um, real quick, before we get into college football, Woodlawn schedule. Madison Prep this Friday, Jamboree. They open up with Jesuit at home. Then they play Warren Easton. Then they travel to Tallulah to yep. play Madison. Then yep. they come home. Then they stay up north and play West Monroe. They come back down and play Zachary. Then they play Dutchtown. <laughs> then they play Santa Mall. Then they play East Ascension. Then they play Catholic High. Then they close out with McKinley. Then they play the Patriots, the Bucks, and the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, bro, that is the only cake on there. Is I McKinley. mean, look at all these. Look at their 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 logos. I mean, if you go down the logos on their schedule, it looks like a who's who of of, of LHSAA That's football. That's exactly what it is. I mean, like, that is the easiest game on their schedule is McKinley. Yeah, and that's week 10. It's that's the last right. game of the season. That's right. It's the last game of the season. Um, okay, LSU. Um, two preseason scrimmages in the, uh, in the books. It feels like the defense has won just by, by going by what people are saying. But uh, offensively, it seems like there have been high points. Max Johnson is the quarterback of this team after Miles Brennan suffered the off-the-field injury. First and foremost, how do you feel about that going into the season? Max, Max I, being the guy. I, I think Max was going to be the guy. 
from what I saw over there and from how they was moving. And also from how he was carrying himself yeah. and how he was, you know, bringing those guys together. Um, kind of Joe Burrow-esque. Uh -huh. Not quite to that level. Right. But, you know, still in the mold. And he was doing the things to let and show and let everybody know that he wants the job, that he really wants the job. I think even a little bit more than Miles was doing. So I, I'm I'm comfortable and I'm good with either one of those guys that was going in to play because both of them played a little bit already. So it's not like they was going in there like a Nussmeyer or something uh -huh. like that and just never had to snap. So I'm comfortable with that. My My thing with it is just that Max has to understand and know when not to use his feet, when to get that ball out, when to just get it in the playmaker's hands because there's not much depth behind him. And, and, and to me, that's, that's, that's the most critical thing is no depth behind him and then have to play a young guy. So now you're leaning a lot on the coaches and them taking certain things, putting certain things in. We were talking about Max's advantage in the competition being his athleticism and his ability to keep plays alive mm -hmm. might be the edge that he had in the competition. Now that you don't have the experience backup mm -hmm. or guy that you would want from a depth standpoint, does that change your on so does that change your approach as a play caller I think with it, Max? I think it does. Um just like similar to when Joe was here and we were saying, oh, don't run, don't do this, don't do that. Now, you're still going to have to do something faster than that because that's your game. So you can't just totally say, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to scramble. That's his game. That's yeah. part of his yeah. game and a big part of his game. He just has to know when the journey's over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When it's second down and five and I've picked up three yards, let me not stick my – let me yeah. not – instead of going out of bounds, let me not turn back into a linebacker in a safety and get crushed for two yards or one yard when I have another down to pick it up and I can hand it to one of these backs and get me two yards. Right. So it's just situations like that. He has to understand the situations and know that he's a little bit more valuable now because of Miles' injury. And, you know, understand that and, and do it accordingly. That's going to be a lot up to Jake Pease, man, and those coaches and Mang and all those guys just to – because, I mean, he's still a young quarterback. Mm -hmm. As mature as he seems, quarterback's dad – excuse me, dad was a quarterback and all that. He's still a young guy. You still have to corral him a little bit sometimes. Uh, how do you feel about the wide receiver on this group? It feels like every time we hear about wide receiver, outside of Butte, it feels yeah. like Butte is, is one of the best in the game, yeah. um, that the first names of these, these freshmen, is, is whether it's, it's Malik Neighbors or whether oh, it's man. Brian Thomas or Chris Hilton or Jack Besh, I mean, <laughs> Deion Smith – Freshmen are some dogs, uh -huh. man. Like, I mean, dog enough that they play yeah. week one? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that, like, I love Malik Neighbors. Yeah. I think Malik Neighbors is going to be next on deck. Yeah. I I mean, I've had the privilege of working with B. Brian Thomas. Before, since he was at Walker. Uh -huh. So, I, re I knew kind of, he's really impressed me. Right. And it's not, you knew he was physical, you knew all that. It, to me, it's just the little things. Like, I watched him at the first scrimmage take off on a go route. And most young wide receivers, once they get past the defensive back, they just run. Mm -hmm. They don't think of yeah, stepping yeah, back yeah. over and stepping back on their toes and giving the quarterback that three-foot, three-foot that we need to drop it over the top. And he just did, I mean, he was, he just did everything. His attention to detail was really impressive for a young quarterback. And I'm going to tell you, Chris Hilton, yeah. another guy that was at Zachary. I mean, Chris Hilton, if, if, he got to be one of the fastest guys in college or football. Or just his athleticism. And he is amazing. I mean, bro, <laughs> he's freaky. He's freaky. His I'm athleticism you, dude, is like, freaky. Like in a in a locker room full of freaks. Yeah. He's a freak. He's yeah, a freak. He the head freak. Yeah. yeah. Um he is a his his athletic ability is and you know the other thing about him? He has really good hands, man. Mm -hmm. For a guy that's so fast, you know, right. normal guys like that that's fast, they can't run routes, they can't do this and Grand LSU's worked with him a bunch. But he has really good hands for a guy that's that fast that you would think is just to take the top off the coverage type of guy or just a deep ball guy. Like, he can be your intermediate catch guy. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's impressive. He's a, all those uh, – listen, they're high on these – Yes, freshmen. they are. Besh has looked awesome. Yes. Everything he does with so much intensity. I love the position that he, they have him on, and he loves it. Uh -huh. Like, I, this, this – he, he, he doesn't – he's not too light. That no. Doesn't, that doesn't free, no. Yeah. Because the thing with him is, he's not one of those guys that looks heavy, big. Uh -huh. But that son of a gun is strong, bro. Yeah, he is strong. 
And physical is a big part of his game, and he doesn't shy away from it. And he has amazing hands. Yeah. The boy catch everything. He does. He catches everything. Everything. Uh, how do you feel about the running backs? Because I hear more about the freshmen, too. I hear Armani Goodwin and, and Corey Connor are probably going to play, too. But is that more of a compliment on them, or is that more of a criticism on Emory and, and, and Ty Davis Price? No, nah, I think it's more of a compliment on uh-huh. those guys. Because, I mean, I, you know, Kev is my guy. Yeah. And those guys, he working the heck out of them, and they all responded to him. Some guys – are now understanding that they're being coached by a great yeah. and listen to every damn thing he tell you to do. So they're getting that part down, and they're all buying in. I I don't have no questions about the running back position at all. They have all kind of different backs that could go in. They all can play. That's the thing about it. They all can play. They all can run the football. They all can catch some a little bit better than others. Of course, Emory and, and those. But – they're, I'm not. That's not a position. They're all going to know what to do. They're all going to understand because of who's coaching them. So that position, I don't worry about. What's the role of the running back in this offense? I mean, outside of the obvious. I mean, what what is he going to be asked to do in in this? Well, I think that there, you have to kind of lean on that position along with your offensive line right now. Because if you look and say what the strength of you of you, what is your strength on offense right now? We can't say the passing game right now because we haven't seen it. We've seen it in scrimmages. But if you look at where your strengths, we talk about the wide receivers. You got one coming back, then a plethora of guys. Yeah. Talented, but still a plethora of guys. Right. Offensive line, you had all of them come back. Yeah. All of them to me have looked better than they have in the previous year. The running back, Todd Davis, Price, Emery, and then the young guy. You know what you have there. So, to me, it's going to be early on getting those guys going and then picking up the passing game. Take your good shots down. Because we, we, it's so many guys that are exposed on offense. Run, 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 shot, shots, intermediate. Run, 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 shot, shots, intermediate. I think that they're going to lean heavy on the running game to start. I agree, Ro. I, I mean, I think we see teams that have been explosive still be point-driven, but – maybe fall back to being more of a run for – I think they do that in Tuscaloosa. I mean, right, I mean, I think they're going to do that. They they have a a fresh a new quarterback and a new offensive coordinator and a dominant oh, offensive they, line. They definitely doing that in Alabama. Yeah, they definitely Florida. doing that. They, yeah, they definitely doing that. If you have the offensive line and you have the backs, and not granted, there I my personal opinion, I think that the quarterback at Alabama is a lot more talented. Yes. Um, just all the way around. Sure. So they're going to do some things with him that you know because. Move. And it's the same thing we could do with Max, but the the, the, the only difference is the arm talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. the arm talent, you could roll one way, throw it back across the field with this guy and all that thing. You're going to have a dominant running game. But that's why I think for us, we can lean on the running game early with these guys that we have, these different backs, and the offensive line that's come back, that's solidified. I think you can lean on them and play action, get the ball out your hands quick with all the receivers, with the plethora of young. And you also don't want to put too much on those young yeah, guys for sure. early on and bring yeah. them in. So I think we're going to be fine at that position. Running back, offensive lineman, I, it's, it's the best, in my opinion, over the last couple of years. that I was, Even when Joe was here that year, I, th- I think this offensive line um, is comparable to that. Hmm. Um, we're excited about football season, bro. I mean, we – we can announce this. We can we can do this. We can say what we we got we got going on. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Get ready. We are going to uh, <laughs> Ro and I are going to be working together in the fall. We're going to do two segments a week, uh, a Monday segment or an early week segment, Monday or Tuesday segment. Yep. Then a Thursday or Friday segment where we'll review on Monday and Tuesday. Then we'll do a little preview on Thursday and Friday. Obviously, you know that Rohan has. Um, he's got kids that are now grown in college, one still in high school. Yep. Uh, but Micah is down playing uh, linebacker at McNeese. So when the schedule allows us on a Saturday to do a, some, some post-game uh, reaction, kind of a whiskey and wine type format, uh, Rohan will be here with us, and we will be talking about the game uh, in real time. We'll be interacting with everybody, and uh, I can't tell you how fired up we are for it. Uh, we are looking forward to working together. In, boy, it's yes, going to be something. <laughs> it's going to be nice. <laughs> it's going to be nice. We're going to be having a good time. Uh, especially in, now that man. we're the bosses. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. so, so you send all your complaints and criticisms right here. <laughs> to the trash. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, it's great to see you, bro. We'll, we'll I know have a trash bin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Throw that one in the trash. We'll keep this one. We'll keep this one. We might smoke this one. Yeah, all right. Why not? Roll it with Rohan. Seven on seven. Uh, it's huge, bro. It's huge. Uh, tell me how this summer was for seven one seven, and kind of now, where where you are. I mean, everybody I talk to in seven one seven, they say you are kind of becoming the face of Louisiana. Set. You probably don't like that, um, but uh, it's probably just the influence that you have on these youngsters and how much respect they have for you, and probably because I've seen you, the love you put into it. Yeah, I love them kids, man. Like you know. It's, for me, it's, and my partner, Ken, who, Ken, and yo, shout out to the best DB trainer in America, my dog. Um, he brought me in on this thing, man. And actually, my son, Michael, was the one that was like, Dad, I want to play 7 on 7. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know nothing about no 7 on 7. Wow. And then I got into it, and wow. that's how it came about. It's, but for me, it's the kids, man. It's, walking, it's working with, like, the Ricky Collins and the, yeah. and the, and the Walker Howards and the Mac Howards and, yeah. you know, uh, the Moonies and the kids, and just to see them better. For me, though, I like the, not the little, little kids. I like, like. The, the two and three stars. Yeah. 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 The yeah, ones yeah. that, like, like I told you about Cam. Yeah. Guys that love the game, love the football, but people been overlooking them and not giving them they do and all yeah. that and all that. I like to work with them, and I love when those kids. The Rohan like Davies the of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really and truly. <laughs> That's what I like about it. But it's taking off, man. We're getting ready to go into Lamar Dixon. At the should be the beginning of next year, right and that's that's football. y'all's home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kyle, man, down yeah. at Lamar Dixon and Miss Shelley. Yeah. So for us, it's it's the momentum has been real good throughout the season. We won two tournaments. We didn't we didn't get a chance to go through the go to the last tournament because the the thing that we want to do and respect is the high school coaches. Uh-huh. We want to respect yeah. the high school coaches and not conflict with anything that they're doing. We want to be able to send the kids back to them better. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Whether it's polished receivers, polished yeah. skills, polished learning routes, knowing that the defensive end ties into the back and it's all in the line. Just having them. We even try to reach out to the high school coaches, man, and was like, what is it that you – because some of them have bad taste in their mouth yeah. for seven on seven. That's what I found out about it. So uh-huh. our approach was we don't want to do anything – to combat what you're doing. If you're not taking a three-step drop this way, I don't want to teach him that way. You know what I mean? If I don't want him to come back to you and he's doing what I done taught him, but now he can't play because he's in your system and right. his footwork is different and all that. So we always I always ask the coach, especially with the quarterbacks, is there anything you want, us, want me to concentrate on with this guy or this and that? And you know what the biggest thing has been from the coaches? Yeah, we need to work on dropping back from center because no one does it anymore. Yeah. Everyone's in a shotgun. Right. But eventually you're going to have to drop back from center at some point. So no one does it anymore. So that's the one thing that all the coaches have been saying, yeah, we need to work on it. Do you think the attitude is from that they've been kind of snipped out of the recruiting process and now coaches are more in, yeah. in, in talking to you guys, talking to the seven-on-seven seven coach? Because you have the – I, I don't, and this is no disrespect on high school, but it seems like you guys have probably the better relationship. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely more personal, uh-huh. the relationship, and and I don't know if we're together longer. We may be together uh-huh. longer, but I probably more one on one. Definitely more one on one because it's not as many kids. Yeah, you know, I we'll have what Daniel, Bill, Ricky, Mac, Mooney, Abram. So it's like eight quarterbacks uh-huh. that's in our organization right now. That's not the twelves or the, or the young guy, young kids. Yeah. So I mean that's eight bona fide guys that could do their thing. You know, so it's Talon, which is a young quarterback at Madison Prep, very talented. Um, so the future is bright, man. The future is bright for seven on seven. We getting like I did a speaking engagement in Thibodeau over the weekend, excuse me, two weekends ago. I was like hundred and sixty kids and said, we get F three up in Thibodeau. Uh-huh. It's on. Yeah, it's just another, you know, another yeah. we up and get we got a guy up in Shreveport. We're just trying to take over this whole thing and then what we want to do is host our own tournaments across the south we we selected 11 regional sites regional spots and then the culmination which would be the super bowl of it all to be at lamar dixon wow which we man at lamar dixon we have the cap- capability to play 22 games at one time going on wow. at one time wow so it'll be one of the biggest seven on seven tournaments in the country 
So that's where we're pushing to get to by February. That's cool, man. Yeah. It's cool to see you. Absolutely. Looking forward to the football season. It's on. Y'all Rohan tune in, Day, man. We in a here. part of the Jordy Collada Show. He will be here twice a week breaking down football, what we see both NFL and college, and then immediately following LSU games on Saturday when the schedule allows. Oh, you forgot something, though. In high school football. But we're going to be there. Every we're going week. to high school football games every <laughs> Friday hey. night. We're going to high school hey. football games. We're going to have swag we're hey. handing out. Yeah. We're going to have cameras. Cameras. We're going to, uh, I mean, this week we're going to Madison Prep Woodlawn. Movie. Madison movie. Prep Woodlawn. It's going to be a movie. Uh, Rohan Davey, newest I'll member of the team. Uh, have a great uh, Tuesday. We're out. We'll be back with you Wednesday, 7 a.m. That's going to be dope. Yes, indeed. I can't wait for that.